Hello, this is David Jensen with your April 29, 2023 economic and markets update. Okay, first of all, uh, if you like this presentation, please do uh, give it a thumbs up. And uh, these are the social media platform uh, where I, I, uh, I post my uh, daily thoughts. And uh, this uh, is my Substack, Jensen David. Um, uh, please sign up uh, if you would like further information. Okay, so we looked on April 1 um, at the, the, the policy um, of the Federal Reserve and the impact on the banks. And I want to start here again with the money supply chart. Um, so what we see here is uh, uh, since 1988, we can see here uh, a number of things that um, these lines here that I've got vertical lines show where the recessions are. And we can see with time that the that the amount of money in the economy, this is the annual rate of change uh, of the money in the economy. Uh, it's called the money supply. And the dark blue line is the, the true money supply measure, which I think is the best. Um, you can review the comparison between the TMS and uh, M2 um, at, at uh, Mises.org. But what we can see here is with time, um, the area here above the red line is a positive increase annually in the amount of money. And we can see that they were not able to uh, restrict the money appreciably with time as the economic uh, and speculative bubbles got bigger. They weren't able to restrict the money supply into a negative uh, annual change as they had previously up until the mid 90s due to the distorted uh, condition of the economy. And that uh, each time we got uh, below roughly the 5% level uh, back since uh, the, the turn of the century really since 2000 that it's caused a market crash and a recession as well. And uh, keep in mind that this is during a period uh, where the total debt in the economy went from 13 trillion up to $93 trillion. Um, the final thing of note here is what I call the monetary inflation kill shot. So the monetary expansion by the Fed by the TMS uh, measure um, hit 40% on an annualized basis. Um, and hit 27% uh, 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 for M2, 40% uh, with the, the TMS, true money supply, uh, year over year. Um, that monetary uh, expansion has created a tremendous uh, goods price inflation in the economy and forced interest rates uh, suddenly higher with a, with a rate shock. And we can see now that the Fed is much, much too late, uh, now desperately contracting um, the money supply uh, trying to contain the price inflation that they've caused, um, but it's too late. The, the damage was here. Uh, the initial damage was really the $93 trillion of debt and then the shock increase in the amount of money out uh, by the, the central planners there at the Federal Reserve. Um, so now we have to deal with the consequences of this uh, economic kill shot. Okay, so in summary, um, the Fed's sudden 5% in increase in interest rates over the last 12 months now has added or will add uh, $4.5 trillion uh, per annum uh, in time of interest payments to the debt bubble economy that's been created. This is unsustainable. It's a $25 trillion economy. You can't suddenly add $4.5 trillion of annual interest payments. And um, uh, the first thing that we're seeing here in terms of major signals uh, has been this rolling bank crisis that over the last 50 days. Um, uh, we've had five, uh, five bank failures here. Um, the latest of, is, of course, um, the First, first Republic Bank. It is in trouble. Uh, it's April 29 today, and um, it's an ongoing problem this weekend that they're dealing with. So the, there's going to be a succession of these dominoes uh, due to the damage caused by the uh, impact of this uh, rate shock um, applied by the, by the Federal Reserve. Okay, so uh, the banks are destabilized by the Fed's uh, price inflation uh, and then the shock rise in interest rates that follow. Now, note here, as we mentioned last time on April 1, um, the, the, the Fed, fractional reserve banks will always fail. They, they only hold uh, roughly right now about 1% of cash backing the deposits. The rest is uh, longer term uh, lending and betting uh, in the various markets, while the uh, deposits, uh, many of them are on demand. Um, and when you've only got 1% cash, uh, you can't have appreciable withdrawal. As we've seen with these, uh, the five uh, banks today that have become destabilized, you can't have 
a run on the bank because it, it uh, rapidly devolves. Um, so the interest rate shock uh, creates a vulnerability. Um, one is that the, the rate increase devalues the assets held by the bank. And we talked in April 1 about the $2 trillion hole um, in the bank balance sheets now from just from the devaluation of uh, bonds and other assets due to uh, a rate increase. And the other aspect uh, referred to it as the other shoe to drop um, is that it leads to further bank asset decline from loan default. So economic decline uh, causes loan default, which uh, is a second um, uh, aspect of damage to, uh, to the banks that's uh, caused by the rate increases. So we have an ongoing uh, impact now uh, of the uh, Fed uh, rate shock that is destabilizing the banks. And we'll look for signals that we can see uh, in the economy and elsewhere here as we go forward. Okay, first of all, um, uh, a rate shock and inflation uh, harms the, the lowest uh, income earners the most. And so this, this Go Banking survey here finds that there's 32.9% um, now that have no more than $100 uh, in, in their bank accounts in the survey that they did. They surveyed 1,000 Americans aged 18 and older. And that is 10% uh, higher uh, than the number of Americans um, who said they held $100 or less, 22% uh, um, back in, uh, in at the same time in 2022. So 12 months later, you've got 10% more people uh, uh, with, with uh, little to no savings in their, in their banks. Another indication here is the, the spike in uh, um, ongoing or continuing unemployment claims. And so this, this here looks at the percent change uh, from the 12 month low in unemployment claims. And we can see we're now here at a 45% increase. And each time this has happened before to this level, uh, we've had a recession going back to the uh, 1968. So we can see here that uh, we can expect an onset of an inflation uh, Imminently, uh, I think we're already in an, uh, a recession, but uh, uh, the official recognition after comes after the fact. Um, we see also a, a, uh, a precipitous decline in, in existing home sales as another indicator of the damage um, from the rising interest rates. You know, uh, mortgages are now over seven percent, and in many cases, up from you know two and a half to three and a half percent. And uh, as expected, we can see. This goes back to 2012 when we had this level of, uh, of uh, existing home sales. So another aspect of damage there is the, the uh, um, uh, impact on sales and then also on, uh, you would expect on mortgage default as these uh, rates, uh, rate increases uh, for, uh, damage individuals who have the adjustable rate mortgages and are unable to keep up with the, with the monthly payments. So, yeah, we see here real estate decline. Um, uh, these are real estate price declines, and we can see that the commercial uh, uh, real estate is down now 21%. Um, uh, you know, uh, that's the change from peak. So down 21% from the peak uh, uh, valuations. And uh, as mentioned previously, it's uh, um, uh, in, the, in the April 1 uh, presentation, we discussed the fact that the commercial uh, real estate uh, loans is uh, held in outsized proportion uh, by the regional banks and the small banks. And so it's no surprise that uh, we have this uh, uh, disruption now in the, in the banking structure. You can see that the, uh, the, that the single family homes um, uh, prices have declined somewhat, but not nearly as much as the commercial uh, uh, real estate loans. And uh, also we're seeing uh, uh, leading economic indicators are, are warning us that the slowdown is going to accelerate. So the blue line is leading economic indicators. The gray line is the GDP. And we would expect these to marry up again. Uh, you know, the, the blue line often leads the gray by a few months. Um, there's a bit of a disconnect here, but we can expect uh, uh, the recession um, to show up here uh, imminently. Um, the manufacturing index also indicates that there's a recession coming and now going back to the mid 1960s again we haven't had uh, this level of, of decline that's the blue line um, uh, is the manufacturing index we've not had a decline uh, of this level without having a, a subsequent uh, recession uh, reaching back uh, more than 50 years um, okay and then bankruptcies uh, 
this is uh, it's going to be very important in terms of the of the uh, mortgages and, and loans that are sending to the banks as as the corporations uh, default um, uh, on their loans it's going to further impair the balance sheet uh, of the banks and we see here this uh, s p global um, note that the corporate bankruptcy filings have hit a 12-year high um, and then this uh, from ubs we can see this is total uh, bankruptcy filings by large and small businesses and Again, um, uh, the corporate bankruptcies are now at a 12-year high, so this is not good news in terms of uh, the sustainability of, of the uh, debt structure that's out there um, at a record debt level. And now we have this uh, latest $200 billion bankruptcy of First Republic this weekend um, is in the news, and uh, it says here the worries grow um, as the FDIC, uh, Federal Deposit Insurance Corp, that insures the uh, bank deposits um, ask banks for bids by Sunday, uh, which is uh, April 30, to avoid bailouts. And the problem is, is that um, the total assets held by the FDIC uh, at the end of December was $128 billion um, versus the total uh, uh, bank deposits in the U.S. of, of $17 trillion or $17,000 billion. So, you know, uh, less than 1% um, of total assets versus total deposits. And it doesn't take very many of these bank runs here to uh, totally gut the um, uh, the FDIC. And this is why I made the argument that we're going to be seeing uh, bank bail-ins where uh, ultimately the deposits are seized and uh, converted into uh, equity in the banks um, uh, once this um, deposit insurance at the FDIC uh, runs out. So as we end 110 years of uh, monetary central planning, I just want to encourage people um, not to delay the preparation. Um, this picture is a bit of a metaphor, but uh, you know the, in, the, the difference in time between these two surfers is about one second. So this guy's about one second ahead of the guy behind him. Um, and we can see the consequence of delay for the, for the chap in the back there. Um, much better to be ahead of things and, and be making uh, personal um, uh, plans uh, for how to deal with this uh, incoming uh, uh, bank crisis and ultimately a currency crisis and uh, and uh, economic and social crisis uh, it appears will be coming along with it because of the scale of what we're dealing with okay these are the four uh, platforms where I post information um, Thank you for your time and I look forward to uh, uh, talking with you again soon.